Hey everybody, so I'm so excited because Microsoft has finally released checkboxes into production from beta. Now, if you're sitting there scratching your head like, Melissa, what are you talking about? We've always had the checkboxes. You are absolutely correct, but it's never been this easy. So if you remember before, to get to our checkboxes, we would have to go to our developer tab, go down to insert, and then we could pick either a form control or an ActiveX control. And I would generally pick an ActiveX control. Then we would draw our checkboxes out and we would make changes to them. We would do formatting. We would add functions, formulas, and try to format them or whatever. But the issue that I had is they weren't consistent. I couldn't get them the same size, even if I typed in the numbers. They, the alignment was off. Something was off. Sometimes the functions and formulas worked and sometimes they didn't. So what Microsoft has done is they have incorporated or integrated these checkboxes into Excel for us so that there's a lot going on in the background. So all we have to do is a few minor changes on the front end to get them to do exactly what we want them to do. And I, for one, am excited, elated. Thank you, Microsoft. It's been a long time coming. So let's take a look at what we can do. So here we have get rid of that. So here we have a list of new customers and some tasks that we have to do for these customers. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to select all of our tasks for our customers, except for status. And if we go over to insert, look here, checkbox, select it, checkboxes. But the beauty of this is, is if you look at them, they're consistent in size, shape, whatever. Now, what Microsoft has done with these is kind of neat. They kind of treat them on some level as a text box. And what this means is if we go to home, we can change their font color just like we would if it was text. We can make them purple. We can make them blue, green, whatever we want. But I'm going to leave mine black. Now we can also make them bigger by using the same increase font or make them smaller by decrease font, just like we would with text. We can't bold them, but I don't necessarily think that that's, you know, something we'll need to do. Um, we can also change their alignment. As you can see, I have mine centered left to right and up and down. We can make them left. We can make them right, however you want to do it. But I'm going to go ahead and keep them in the middle. So now if we look, their checkboxes. Isn't that awesome? They're all the same size, consistent. We love it. So I'm going to go ahead and clear these out. And one thing I want you to notice before I do that, the ones that I have checked, if you look up in your formula bar, they say true. The ones that are not checked, they say false. And keep that in mind because we're going to need that a little bit later when we do some formatting. So I'm going to go ahead and clear these out. Now we can do this a couple of ways. We can highlight them and we can go to clear up here and do it that way. But if we hit delete, that's going to clear our checkboxes. If we hit delete again, it's going to delete the checkboxes. And of course, control Z will put them back. So now we want to look at our status, which is a huge project management thing. Where are we in the process? What percentage are we done? Are we 10, 20, 30, or are we totally complete at 100%? Now, the easiest way for us to figure this is by using our count if function. So let's go ahead and do equals count if. And our range is where are we looking? Well, we're looking at our check boxes. So we want to select just one row of the check boxes. And we're going to do a comma. And then our criteria is what are we looking for? Well, if you remember just a few minutes ago, I said keep it in mind that if they're checked, it's true. If they're not checked, it's false. So we're going to look to see if they are checked. So in, for our criteria, we're going to put in true. And then we're going to divide by the number of tasks that we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to divide by five. And we're going to hit enter. 
Now, if you haven't, I've got this done ahead of time, but you want to make sure that this is on a percentage and you can just change that up here because you don't want it to say like 0.75222 or 0.25 whatever. So just make sure it's on a percentage and you can go ahead and double click to carry it down. And now as we start checking things, you can see 20%, 40, 20, and we're just going to check some of these. Now, if we get one of them completely done, it goes to 100%. So let's just do a couple more. Okay, so now let's say that we want these ones that are complete to stand out so that we can differentiate fairly easily between what we need to do and what's already done. So we're going to do that using conditional formatting. So if we go home, conditional formatting, and we go to new rule, we're going to select use a formula to determine which cells to format. So select that. And then in our formula bar, we're going to do equals and we're going to tell it if this first status cell. Now, before we go any further, if you look, there's two dollar signs here. For whatever reason, Excel wants to put this as an absolute cell reference and that can cause us some issues. So we want to back out this second dollar sign. So click right before it, hit your back. And then right after the four, click again. And then we're going to tell it equals 100% because that's what we're looking for, for this status to be 100%. So equals 100%. And we're going to format it. Now we can do whatever we want here, but the big color for completed seems to be green. So we'll just go with what everybody else does. So we're going to tell it to format it green. And then I'm going to go over to my font and I'm going to tell it, you know, maybe make this a gray. Not sure how good that'll show up, but we'll find out. So let's make it a light gray. We're going to tell it OK and tell it OK. And as you can see, this first one is highlighted green with our gray writing. If we double click, it's going to carry it on down. So if we go into another one and we complete it, it's going to turn it green as well. So now let's say that we want to do something even a little bit more different. Like when I'm working on a project, if I have a task that is completely done, I'm going to turn that entire line gray so that I can very easily differentiate between what I've already done and what I have to do. So to do that, we're going to select all of our customer information and our tasks, but we're not going to select the status. And we're going to go back to conditional formatting, new rule, and it's going to be the same thing. Use a formula to determine. Select it. So in our formula, we're going to choose the same cell, which is our first status cell. And again, we're going to take out the absolute cell reference because it can cause us some issues. And we're going to do equals 100% again. And when we go into format, we're going to go to fill and we're going to tell it gray. Now use whatever gray you want, but I'm going to use like a medium dark gray. And I think the writing will be okay, so we're just going to leave it alone. Tell it okay and tell it okay. And now as you can see, anything that's 100%, that entire line except for this last column is grayed out. So let's go ahead and do another one. So you can see that as soon as it's 100%, it marks that one gray as well. And now you can use the new check boxes that Microsoft has given us to do some conditional formatting, to make things easier to read. You can do functions, formulas, play around with them. You cannot break them. So that's it for today. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.